Hello, this is Mighty Owl. Have you ever had to double a recipe? Say a mac and cheese recipe called for three cups of shredded cheese and five cups of macaroni. Doubling the recipe would then require six cups of cheese and ten cups of macaroni. If you had to triple or even quadruple the original recipe, you could do the math to figure out how many ingredients you needed. But you would rest assured knowing that the final mac and cheese would taste just as good as the original recipe. That's because the relationship between the cups of cheese and cups of macaroni are in proportion to each other. So whether it's three cups of cheese and five cups of macaroni, or six cups of cheese and ten cups of macaroni, the ratio of cheese to macaroni is always the same. We call this a proportional relationship. Today, we're going to practice recognizing if numbers have a proportional relationship. Let's begin by looking at a few tables with different values. All right, let's determine if the values are proportional or not. We can take the values from table one and graph them out to see visually if they are in a proportional relationship. There we go. For quantities to have a proportional relationship, there are two requirements. First, the values have to form a straight line when they are graphed. Let's look at our points. They are in a straight line. Neat. Next, we want to see if the line passes through the origin, or where the x and y axes cross. Here is the origin, at 0, 0, and here is our line passing through the origin. These values are proportional. Check out this graph. Although the points create a straight line, it does not pass through the origin. These values are not proportional. Graphing values is a great way to visualize numbers, but it can take a lot of time. We can determine if the quantities are proportional without graphing. How, you might ask? Well, let me show you. When we look at the table, we want to see if there is an equivalent ratio for each pair of numbers. Oh, and equivalent ratios means that all of the ratios created by the x and y values create the same ratio. Let's start by making a ratio with the first set of values. We will create the ratio by taking the value in the y column and placing it over the value in the x column. Here we go. Negative 12 over negative 4. A negative over a negative is equal to a positive, so we can simplify to 3 over 1. We have our first ratio. Let's keep going. Negative 6 over negative 2 also simplifies to 3 over 1. Next row, 9 over 3 is also 3 over 1. We may have found our ratio. We need to make sure all of the values in the table have the same ratio. Last one. 15 over 5 is 3 over 1. Fantastic! The values in the table all have the same ratio, 3 over 1. This means that they are proportional. Now we can look at the next table. We'll take the same steps with these values and create ratios. First row. Negative 3 over negative 6 is equal to 1 half. If all of the values in the table have an equivalent ratio, then they are proportional. Let's keep going to find out. Negative 2 over negative 4 is equal to 1 half. 3 over 6 is also 1 half. Fantastic! There's one more to try. Hmm. 7 over 10 does not simplify to 1 half. That means the values in this table are not proportional. Could we make these values proportional? How can we change 7 or 10 to make them proportional? The ratio that was created with all of the other values was 1 half. If we kept the y value of 7 the same, we would need to change the x value to 14 to get a ratio of 1 half. Another option would be if we kept the x value, 10, the same the y value would then have to be 5 to have a ratio of 1 half. Look at that! We were able to make the values in the table proportional. Let's see how proportions are helpful to Latifa. Latifa is learning about architecture. She decided to make scale drawings of some of the buildings that she learned about. Is her scale drawing proportional to the original structure? The original room in a building is 12 feet long. The scale model has the same room at 6 inches in length. The width of the room is 8 feet long, 
and the scale model has a width of 4 inches. Before we can compare these measurements, we will need to convert them to the same unit. 6 inches is the same as one half of a foot. 4 inches is equal to one third of a foot. Now that we have the same units, we can look at the relationship between the numbers. How does 12 become one half? And how does 8 become one third? Hmm. 12 divided by what is equal to one half? Or one half times what is equal to 12? 24. Well, it also turns out that 8 divided by 24 is one third. The ratio for the widths and the lengths are both the same. So this means that the scale drawing is proportional to the original building. The original building is 24 times bigger than the scale. You did some fantastic work. You were able to determine if values were proportional by using tables and graphs. You also helped Latifa look at proportions at work in the world around us. Great job today combining your knowledge of ratios and graphing with proportions.